Thank you. Amen. If you have your Bibles, if you'll turn with me to the book of Psalm chapter 34. Psalm chapter 34. Custom here to read scripture before our tithes and offering. And Brother Phil, hopefully, while the ladies will be gone, it's also husband appreciation. You know, uh, I guess it depends on what condition the house is in when they get back, right? Yeah. Amen. We do miss our, our ladies. And so, Scripture tells us this. I sought the Lord, and he heard me. If that was all we heard today, it's more than enough. To know that we serve a God that is able to listen to us. Your request does not fall upon deaf ears to him. He cares about you. You are his children. You have the DNA within you because of him. But watch this. And deliver me from all fear. I don't know what you walked in here this morning fearing. I don't know what the enemy has spoken to your life. But I'm here today. This verse right here. Seek after the Lord. He will hear your cries to him. And he will remove all fear. Look at verse 5. They looked to him and were radiant, and their faces were not ashamed. I don't want anybody to look at me and say, he looks like an ashamed Christian. I don't want anybody to look at me and somehow think that somehow I, I'm ashamed to be at Ridgeville Church of God or I'm ashamed to be a pastor. I want people to know I, I am a child of God. I will post it everywhere. Listen, if you'll post Carolina 1 by 40, well, I mean, we scored 40. We've done something we ain't done in a while. Win a game by that much. And if we'll gladly post that on our social media, but we won't say anything about Christ, you need to shut down your social media. Because, yes, I understand it can be a bad thing and used for wrong intentions, but it also can be free advertisement for the glory of God. To be able to say, listen, I'm not ashamed of the God that I serve because of what he's done for me. Let me, let me hurry real quick here. And they looked at him and they were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried. That's me right there. This poor man cried and he saved him from all his troubles. There's not a rich person in here that can buy your way into heaven. You can't buy your way out of problems. You can't buy happiness. Now, money helps. Don't get me wrong. That's why we're fixing to take some of yours. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But the enemy will try to tell you, make more money, you'll be happier. Can I just tell you, for me, the more I made, the more it took. The more I thought I could go get this or that. But God has been gracious, and he said, listen, I'll do more with your 90 than you can do with your 100. God's math ain't our math. And so I want you to look at this, and finishing in verse 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Whatever your fears are, I want you to do one thing today. I just want you to trust God. I want you to believe that he is able. So I want you to just hold your tithes and offering in your hand, and I want to pray right now. Father, I believe that you're doing something. Lord, I believe you're answering prayers in the atmospheres, and some of us have just wondered, when are we going to hear from you? But I believe the answer is on the way, that it's been delayed because of some spiritual warfare, but as we press in and as we press on, God, we understand that those that have cried out unto the Lord, that he has heard their petitions. And because you have heard us, we know that you're responding. And it won't always be the way that we want it. It won't always be the answer that we want it. It won't always be at the time frame that we want it. But Lord, I pray today that whoever has walked in here in the spirit of fear, Lord, that they leave with a sound mind, that they leave understanding that God cares about you. Oh, how he loves you. And oh, how he loves me. And so here right now, God, we thank you for an opportunity to be in the house of God. We thank you to get up. We thank you for the abilities that we have to, to walk and touch and speak and hear and see because we know that there are those that don't have that. We thank you, Lord, to touch such a poor man such as I. And you paid a price that you knew I could not pay to save a soul. 
as wretched as me. And I know that's not the only testimony here in this house. And so God, as we give to you today, we don't give to receive anything back. We give to bless the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and we bless the house because it is a lighthouse to a lost and dying world. And so Lord, honor that which we give. Multiply it. Your word says you'd multiply it some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. And so Lord, here today, as we put our trust in you, we give cheerfully. In your name we pray. Amen. And amen. Would you come and bless the house of God this morning?
want to invite you, if you want to, come to the altar. Come to the altar and worship. We are free to worship. We are free to worship. We are not going to be bound by chains this morning. We are going to get rid of, rid of the spirit of heaviness this morning. There's no place we would rather be than in the spirit of the Lord. And he's here today. If you need something, you need to come down to the altar. And you need Solid. 
You know, this week the Lord gave me a message. And I believe that God doesn't work in accidents or circumstances. But divinely. When he dropped this into my spirit, I was like, Lord, this makes no sense whatsoever. You ever had those moments with God? Like, well, he don't make any sense to you. And we have to realize that God is better than us, stronger than us. He knows more than us. And so when he dropped this phrase, and I, I was working on it all week, I, I guess, uh, among being a single dad, since my wife is, is, is gone, knowing my mind needed to be over here, I couldn't get away from over here. And the title of today's message is, I'm thankful for the name. I'm thankful. For, see, there's, there's something powerful about a name. If Jesus had never said, Lazarus, come forth, every dead person could have come forth. So if you're in the midst of a crowd and a child says, Mama, if you're a daddy, you're probably not going to turn around. Unless the voice is what you're used to. And you're like, well, that's my child. And they're wanting Mama, so let me locate Mama and my child. We give people names for a reason. Names are powerful. But names have meanings. You know, there are some companies that you and I shop at that are last name or first name people. Maybe you own a pair of Air Jordans. You know who that person is? We would say Michael Jordan. Some of you have maybe gotten a, a contractor off of Angie's list. It's actually named after Angie, Angie Hicks. We could go down the list, and some of you have shopped at Barnes & Nobles. And Barnes & Nobles is William Barnes and Clifford Noble. And I got about a whole page here. But then I shifted, and the Lord began to shift me, and I began to look at my own family dynamic. Who is the Houstons? We're Scottish. You won't see me in a, in a kilt. I'm not playing bagpipes. I know some of you would love to see that. But just go ahead and get that image out of your mind. But when you know where you're from, you will appreciate the heritage. Last Sunday was Heritage Sunday, and I thought maybe, God, maybe you got them mixed up. But then he began to say, you know, my name, Charles, Charles in the back, means strong and manly. Oh, oh, oh. yeah, yeah, he got that one right, yeah, you know. But my middle name is Matthew, and it's a gift of God. And I hope my children and my wife can say, he's got that right too. But my last name means settlement on a hill. Somebody had to fight for territory. And we could go through your last name and your first name and your middle name, and you may not even like your name. I'm not going to name names because, you know, I just know what some people don't like and some people like, and I don't want to offend you if that's your name. But I'm grateful for something. In Matthew 28, verse 18, it says, And Jesus came and spoke these sayings, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things and whatsoever I have commanded you, lo, I am with you even unto the ends of the world. There's something about the name 
Now, see, I grew up singing, there's something about the name. And it's a sweet song that ushers us into the presence of the Lord. But I want to talk to you today and see if you're thankful for the name that is above all names. I want you to be seated. In almost 45 years of ministry or living on earth, I'm not 45 years in the ministry. You know, I'm sure my mom accounts me a blessing to her. And, and so, you know. I've caught her more on her knees because of me, probably, than anything. But I look up my wife's name because names matter. My wife, Betsy, is a derivative of Elizabeth. And Elizabeth simply, you know it within the scriptures, but Elizabeth just means God is perfection, or even God is an abundance. And she, my wife is all I can handle, so that's right, right there, you, you know. How these people think they can have, you know, more than one woman? You need deliverance because I can't handle but one. But I begin to look at this, and Isaac is actually a derivative of Elizabeth. Izzy, we named on purpose Isabella because it's a derivative of my wife's name who is a derivative of Elizabeth. And so... We weren't planning on having any more kids, and this is not an announcement that we're expecting number four, okay? I don't want my wife wrecking the van on the way home. <laughs> you know something I don't need, you know, one of those kind of things. But Isaac was named after me with Matthew, Isaac Matthew, and Malachi was named after my father-in-law. And then here's, here's Izzy, Texas Tornado. That's what we should have called him, light. But there's something about the name. And if you looked at your name, chances are you ended up being a lot like your name. And who knew it prior to announcing your name? Who knew that Isaac means one who brings laughter? You, you know, Isaac is always making us laugh uh, as, as quiet as he may look. But in life, you have to understand that Family history on the physical side also means I got a family history on the spiritual side. And that's where I want to bring to you today because you got to know that you know the name that you serve. Who is the God that you serve? You have to call him by name. Because if you just say, well, I serve God, well, what God is that? Is that big G or little g? And we live in a society that has everything's a God. This, this box right here becomes a God. I know some people, and I know it ain't you today, but some, this is their God. Some, their sports team, some, their boat, some, their shoe collection, some, their purse collection, some, their gun collection. It's become a God to them. And so you and I got to be very careful when we say, I worship God. So I think we need to add to, meaning the God above all gods. The Lord that's above all, the name that is above all names. Why? Because at the end of the day, the Bible tells us that when they tried to cast out the demons, they said, I know this one, but I don't know you. I want the enemy to know the God that I serve because I am thankful for the name that has bled for me, died for me, rose for me, and protects me. He has cleansed me from all my sins. He has removed all the wickedness out of my life. And I'm able to walk in obedience with him because there's just something about that name. Master, Savior, when you get to these places, see, watch this. This is what I got really excited about. There's authority in the name. My son or my daughter can walk and say uh, to the school. I tell them, don't say it here now, you know, but to the school. My dad is so-and-so. You know who my dad is? I know you've heard that said. Especially if your dad has ever been in a political position, a, a position of authority. But I tell my kid, you don't ever say that here in church. Because the authority in this house is God. And we all fall subject under his authority. But here's where I'm trying to get. When Jesus said, uh, let, me, let me just help you. In, in Matthew 28, verse again. And Jesus spoke and said, all power is given unto me into heaven and into earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. What was Jesus doing right there? It was a transfer of authority. 
And so here's where I got really excited. I almost shouted inside my, my house because in, in, in this reference of transfer of authority, you ready? It is as if Jesus is giving you power of authority. Or we would call it in today's society a power of attorney, a POA, which just simply means that this individual is able to act on behalf of my name. And so I begin to look, okay, God, this is really good. There are four types of POAs, power of attorney. Number one is a general one. Now, this person has all authority except when you become incapacitated. The moment you, we're going to pick on Brother Brad because he always says this, so I'm not being disrespectful, folks. You know I had a stroke. So he had a stroke. And if at any point he becomes incapacitated to the point that he cannot make a decision for himself, if you had the general power of attorney, it ends right there, gone. Because only the person with a durable POA, power of attorney, can have the authority to act on behalf of that person even when they're incapacitated. What am I trying to say? Simply this, that God has given you and I authority to be able to do great and mighty things in his name. But the church has refused to operate in the authority that God has given us. We don't want to cast out devils because we've gotten too used to them. We don't want to see the healed or the sick made healed because some of them will understand, well, if I get healed, I'm going to lose my disability. I know I'm stepping on somebody, but there's a reason we don't want to grow because growing means that God's going to remove some things from our life and God's going to hold you accountable for some things in your life. And so we would just rather have the following two power of attorneys. Number one or number three, if you will, in the order is a specific or limited power of attorney. It only is authority in this area. I don't mind claiming healing over my body, but I'm not going to claim uh financial blessings or uh, you know we, we get specific in this area and broad over here there's a reason why I don't always like unspoken prayer requests simply because if somebody says hey will you agree with me this did not happen in here okay y'all yo, yo. let me I got a caveat that real quick <laughs> a young lady come down to the altar wanting the pastor to uh, pray with her and she said I have an unspoken prayer request. And the pastor said, I believe with you. We're going to pray for that unspoken request. She goes back home, tells her husband, the pastor agreed with me that I'm to leave you and go to marry this other man. So I know y'all not going to give that type of prayer request. Right? <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. But if we want specific answers from God, there are times that you're going to have to be specific in your prayers. You're going to have to call those things as if they were. You're not going to just say, well, God, I just want you to bless me. Well, okay, well, if I bless you with abundance of toilet paper because we had a shortage and your health is failing, what's it going to be? We get into this place in our lives that if we're not careful, we even do this one. It's called the fourth one. It's called the spring durability of uh, uh, POA. It's the, where the agent is only specific in one event. I don't mind exercising the authority in the church, but I'm not going to do it in my home. I'm not going to do it at the job. So here is too many. This is what God told me. Too many of my children only exercise my authority during specific events and only in certain areas. My name has healed people, set people free, made demons flee, established kingdoms and will be in my name that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. Why does my children limit my authority in them? And I have to say there are times that I fit all four of these categories. But my ultimate goal, if I'm wanting to grow in Christ Jesus, is to be able to get to this durable that when everything else seems to be falling apart, I can walk with authority and say, I know whose son, or in your case, if you're a woman, I know whose daughter I am in Christ. You have authority where the enemy has to flee. You can walk over somebody and lay hands on them, and they can recover from their sickness. Why? Because God said, greater things can you do than what I've done. And I know not everything's recorded that he does. But you can lay hands on an individual and they can come back. You can lay hands and a sickness can go away. You can lay hands on a marriage. You can pray and great things happen, but we don't like it. Because in order for it to happen, it requires some sacrifices. It requires us to push away the plate sometimes. And we don't like fasting. 
It requires us to pray, and we don't really like praying because that really takes us away from the ball game. That really takes us away from, you know, uh, the soap operas or, or watching whatever y'all watch on, on the evenings. We DVR everything, so I don't even know what's on. It's Disney something, you, you know. But at the end of the day, whose name do you pray under? Do you pray under the name of Jesus Christ? Or do you pray under your own name? See, you may say the name of Jesus, but do you believe in the name of Jesus? Wednesday night, Reverend Boodle highlighted this in John 14, 3, 13 and 14. And whatsoever you shall say in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Now, that sounds like I could ask the Lord for the lottery numbers and I'm going to win. I don't think that's the will of God for my life. I don't believe that there are some prayers that we ask that we want to be in God's will, but it's not in God's will. And so we got to get to this place that we begin to pray and say, okay, God, I want your will to be done over this situation. If you want me to have that promotion, I, I, I'm, I'm claiming it right now, but according to your will, not my will. I don't want it if you're not going to go. In, in the Old Testament, they had actually priests and prophets that would pray to God and say, are we supposed to go? And if God said no, they didn't go. And if God said go, they would go. But I believe in the church so often we think we know God's will, but we haven't prayed and sought God's will. That just because God blessed one person in that way doesn't mean God will bless you in that way. And so we got to get to this thing. And so I want to uh, break this down real quick, and then I'm going to let you go and bring you back at 6 o'clock. How about that? Number one, you got to give God glory. Every request that you ask of God needs to give God glory. So when we pray, we, we pray in, in, in a such a way that it does not bring glory to me, but all to him. I, I want everything that happens, God, what it, however you answer this request, no matter what, I'm going to give you praise. Because sometimes no is actually saving you. Sometimes wait a minute is actually preparing you to enjoy the full blessings of God. Because sometimes, you know, hey, 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 let's, let, let's look at it this way. Your first crush that you just thought you were going to marry. Maybe you did marry him, and I'm not talking about you, if, you know, but the ones that didn't work out. And, and now you've got the jewels. I thank God he didn't answer my request back in the day. God, I think this one right here is it. I think they'll make a good one. Uh-uh. You, you know, it's almost like you, you just want, if I could turn back time, you, you know, I would be like, Lord, can I take that request back? I didn't really mean that, God, because I know what you got for me now. You, you know, but too often we think we know best. So now we got to go to God and say, okay, God, I'm coming to you with sincerity. We'll get to that in a minute. But watch this. We should never go to him only when we want things and only when the bad things happen. If you can't praise God on the mountaintop, if you can't rejoice with God on the mountaintop, it's going to be hard to do it down here. And what I mean by hard, we'll always cry out. But I'm talking about where you have this genuine connection with God. But see, God wants to help you through everything you face. God wants to help me through everything I face. And so number two, we got to seek the will of God. Because Matthew 26 and 29 says, Jesus, as he's teaching his disciples to pray, thy kingdom come. The first opening line, pray this prayer. Lord, thy kingdom come, thy will be done as it is in heaven, as it is on earth. And so we seek God's will. God, what is your will for my life? Should I really buy that car? Should I really buy that house? Should I really get this promotion? Should I really do this, really do that? If you are sincere in your seeking, God will respond. God's not a cruel God that he just turns the deaf ear and say, talk to the hand. I know that's dating myself. You know, we don't do that anymore. I don't know what they do now. But there are times that we're upset with God 
because he made a decision we don't like. There are times that we, we, we challenge God. And I know people have taught me this all my life that you're not supposed to question God, and I disagree with that. I believe that there are moments in respectful manners that you can just ask God, God, I don't, I don't, that don't make any sense to me. Jesus is praying in the garden, Father, let, if it be your will, let this cup pass from me. He, he wanted to do it, but he wanted to be in the will of God. And there are some things that we look at and we're like, I don't like the turnout how this happened. I don't like the turnout of this. And, and sometimes it's for God to get our attention. And sometimes God knows best. He knows our beginning and he knows our end. He knows everything about us. And so we have to quit blaming God and start believing in God. That's number three, James 1. 6 through 8 says, but let him ask in faith, not wavering. For he that wavereth is like a, a wave of a sea driven out of the winds and is tossed. For let, no, for let it be known that that man that thinks he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Listen, if you pray him but you don't really believe God's going to respond, it's a false hope that you're putting in your faith. You got to go and begin to pray that God, I know you can do it. Growing up, we used to have prayer uh, time, and, and we would linger at the altars. We would linger in our prayer closets at home. We, we wanted to, God to move, and we would pray those Jacob-type prayers. You know what I'm talking about. God, I'm not going to leave here until you bless me. I'm not going to leave here until, until you touch me. But we've lost that because now we think, well, I, I can feel God over here. I can feel God over here. And you can because he's omnipresent. But there's a reason scripture says forsake not the gathering of the saints or the believers because we need each other. And, and, and my daughter and I, we were having this conversation on the way to church. And, and, and I won't tell you what she was saying because some of y'all will be offended. But she got to, you know, uh, these parts right here, Sister Kathy must be really teaching her some stuff. And Sister Bobby Sue, because she and, and my wife, as they teach her at homeschool, she says, uh, God wants us to hate the devil. We're supposed to hate sin. We're, I mean, she was getting all preachy on me this morning, and, and, and I was about to take up an offering for her. <laughs> but if a five-year-old can speak and, and, and repeat what has been taught to her, there's a reason we push life groups. There's a reason we push church, because if you only open this right here when you come to church, it's going to be a hard battle for you to fight all week long. If the only time that you pray and believe that God's going to do something is when you're gathered and believe. Listen, the reason God wants you and I to come together is because when I'm weak, I have somebody to lift me up. When you're weak, you got somebody to lift you up. You are able to uh, talk about your storms and be able to say, oh, I, I've been through a similar trial. And look, this is what God does. And it lets you know that you're not alone. Because at the end of the day, the devil tells you nobody has ever gone through what you're going through. And you got to believe in God. Listen, Jesus himself died on the cross. God was his father, and he watched his son die. And so he knows what death is. He knows what the resurrection is. He knows what healing is. He knows what deliverance is. He knows how to make a way where there seems to be no way. I just wonder if some of us would believe if God said, go fishing, and I'll supply your finances. How many of us would go fishing? Or would we say, well, Brother Gene, I don't have a boat. How am I to go fishing? I don't own a fishing rod. If God said this is the way you're going to be blessed and you really believe in him, you would do everything you could. You would go jump on somebody's boat as they drive by the dock. <laughs> hey, 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 I'm going to use your fishing rod for a minute. I got a bill I need to pay. You know, we're gonna, uh, you know call Brother John and hey, can I borrow a boat? You, you know, we're going to do whatever we can because if we really believe that God's going to answer our request, then we don't let anything stand in the way. But too often we let doubt rise because we have begun to disbelieve in God. Because we've watched too much social media, too much of the news, we've read too much in the paper, we've heard too much. And the most people, all they do is spread lies and they spread negatives. When's the last time you've heard somebody spread something positive? You are a carrier of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And any time you begin to spew negative out of your mouth, it erases the positive that God's trying to do in you. Because a negative and a positive makes a what? Yeah. 
But we also, well, you know, he hurt me, so I got to hurt him. What would Jesus do? I've heard some say, well, Jesus would have done it too. You know, he'd have just done it better than me. I mean, Jesus was mad. Jesus got angry. Could you imagine you're so frustrated that you walk into your office and begin to turn the desk over because you're so frustrated? You're probably going to be fired. High probability, unless you own the company, you're going to be fired. Jesus, the temple, he was so frustrated because these individuals was taking advantage of people. They were telling them, oh, this animal over here, this animal was dirty, and it wasn't really dirty. They were marking them. And there are people in your life, they're not really bad people. It's just the enemy is marking them because he wants you to be led astray. And because nobody could step up with authority against the authority, they had to just go with the flow. But I'm here today to tell you that we serve a God that does not bow down to any other authority. So we need to walk in faith and begin to declare that this is the will of God. This is what God wants for me. I walk in authority. I can look at the enemy in his face and say, devil, get thee behind me because I have the authority as a child of God. But too often we, 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 we retreat because we don't want to confront the enemy. And then the enemy begins to slip into the church, slip into our homes, in every other place. And so... In John 14, verse 13 and 14, we read this, but Jesus, again, is saying, you got to ask in his name, not yours. So i got to come to Christ, come to God in humility. And with with this request that it's not about me, God, I'm, I'm asking in your name because I know my name has no meaning outside of what somebody has established it to be. But I know that you have all authority. And I know that you've given it to us. Because in James chapter 4, I'm going to close with this. The Bible says in verse 1, From whence comes wars and fighting among you? Come that they may stop, even with your lust, that the war is in your members. Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet we have not because you ask not you ask and receive not because you ask amiss that you may consume it with your lust that scripture James is addressing fellow Christians in the church I love the book of James probably one of my favorite books and and, and James is is trying to describe this strife that's happening among Christians and they're causing war and issues in the body of Christ two people that has the same authority given to them by God, one's trying to act like they're better than the other. Can I tell you today that there's not one of us here that's better than anybody else? Just because I'm here, I'll make it even for you. I could be on the floor, I can be in the back, I could go work the nursery, it doesn't make a deal to me. But old but to serve in the Father's house. I don't hide behind a podium because I think I'm better than somebody. You can ask this family that's on the front row. For the last month, I have walked with them through the deepest journey of their life. And I have spent countless hours with them trying to help them. Why? It's not because I'm anybody special. But it's because I believe in the authority that God has given us. That we're supposed to help people when they need help. I don't want to be the person that crosses the other side of the street because I see somebody in need and I don't want to get my hands dirty. Let me just phrase it this way as you stand. I believe God's wanting to do something. If he was willing to bleed and die for you, can you not get a little dirty for him? And there are going to be moments that you want to worship God. There are going to be moments that you serve God that you're going to go through the trenches. 
I've been in church almost my entire life, and I can tell you that even being in church, even being a pastor, there are moments that you feel all alone. There are some burdens that my wife cannot carry that God has only given me to carry. There are some burdens in your life, some situations that goes on in your life that you may have a great support system that carries you and it helps you and it lifts you up, but at the end of the day, some things only you and God can handle. But if you don't believe in God, if you don't have a right relationship with God, The demons will look at you and say, Peter we know, Paul we know, but who are you? Because some people try to exercise authority they don't have. But if you were a child of God, there's a name that you get to claim. There is power in the name. And so I want every head bowed and every eye closed. First and foremost, maybe you're here today and you say, Pastor, I don't know Christ as my Lord and Savior. I want to get my heart right. I want to be that child of God that you talk about. We know in Romans 10, it says, If thou wilt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. And I wonder, maybe there's one here today that says, Pastor, I need to be saved. If that's you, I just want you to look up this way and put your head right back down. I see you. I see you. Thank you. Thank you. I see you. I see you. Maybe today you would be honest and say, Pastor, I've been operating not in the full authority of God. I want to increase as he increases me. Not of myself, but as my Father allows me to grow. If that's you, I just want you to look this way and put your head right back down. Yeah, yeah. I'm there with you at times. Yeah. So, Father, stillness of this moment you have transferred authority to us that we now can do the same things and even greater of what you've done on this earth but you didn't come to make a name for yourself you came to give glory to your father and so your death on a cross was not in vain today several individuals look this way to be saved and so Lord as we pray a simple prayer Father I confess my sins and my ways to you I want to follow your will and I believe that you died for me that you want to be my father and so this day I commit my life to you. And we know, Father, that they prayed that prayer. There's no fancy words for salvation, no going behind closed doors. Their name is now written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And they truly are today as angels are rejoicing, sons and daughters of Jesus Christ. And they're able now to walk in the full authority. But there were some today, God, that looked and said, I don't operate in the full authority that I need to through God. And there have been times, Father, I have fallen in all four of these categories. And I strive to do my very best to be able to exercise the authority that you exercised here on earth. But I also know that the enemy will bring things our way as he did you. And come with false authority to deceive, to get one to fall in a moment of vulnerability. So right now, Lord, I pray that you would strengthen everyone here. That you would move miraculously in their lives and that you would uplift them and that you would do supernatural works in them. That this day, by the time they leave, that they feel a recharge within their spirit, within their minds to be able to follow suit of the accomplishments of you. And so, Lord, as a 
act of agreement as a sign. We want to do something that we try to do here on a regular basis, and we want to take up a moment of communion. But before we do, while your heads are still bowed and your eyes are still closed, we know in Corinthians we see that Jesus says in those words that we're not to take part of communion unworthily, that we're to search ourselves and see if there be any wicked ways in us, that we do not bring damnation to ourselves. And so, Lord, you know the conditions of every heart, every mind. If there's anything in their life that should not be there, if there's anything in my life that should not be there right now, right now, I pray that you would cover it under the blood. And I pray that they too would ask that same, Father, cleanse me of all unrighteousness, that I might be found worthy. And I know we can never be worthy enough to partake in this, but Lord, you know our heart's intent to be clean, purified before you in this sacrament that we do. Would you bless us in Jesus' name? In Jesus' name. While you're standing, if you would like to participate in the communion service here, if I can get some ushers to just come and stand. After the conclusion of this, I'm just going to ask you to reach your hands forward, and we're going to pray over these boxes. These are boxes that individuals have come. Could you get the nursery and kids' church? I don't want to leave anybody out. But at this moment, if you'd like to participate in the communion service, if you'll come, grab a cup and go back to your seats. I won't keep you much longer. Scripture tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I, I use this scripture. I know Matthew has the Lord's Supper in it as well. But I use this because it tells us about examining ourselves. There's no one perfect in this house. No, not one. We have our issues. We have our faults. We have our our high moments and our low moments. But this was an act that Christ did. We serve our children. This was an act that Christ did. And could you imagine knowing that the person that was with him was going to be betraying him, one that he's invested in, one that he has tried to do. And, and he says, do what you got to do. And a movement occurred. So I want you to hear this. For I received of him, or from the Lord, that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given it, gave thanks, and he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. I want you to remember the sacrifice that Christ did. 
It was a brutal, a, a, a brutal scene. Stripes being on his back, his beard. Take this young man right here on the front and having the beard ripped out of his face. A crown of thorns that would eventually be placed in his head two inches in length, carry a cross to pay an ultimate sacrifice for you and me. I don't want communion to just be something we run through, but I always want us to remember it came with a price. And so today, if you'll take and eat of this body, which is broken for you, do it in remembrance of Christ. The next part, verse 25, it says, In the same manner he took the cup. And after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The blood that was shed, may it never be in vain. What can wash away my sins? Nothing, nothing but the blood. Would you partake of the cup today? Father, as we honor the sacrament, we know it must have been difficult to go into this meeting of those you love. You knew the outcome even before you arrived here on earth. And yet you came to pay an ultimate price. That one day, me and so many others could be free from the bondage of sin to restore a broken relationship and for that we're eternally grateful but you have placed us in areas that we can be beneficial to others that we can bless others and I look on this stage and I see individuals that have sacrificed their own finances To reach those they will never see, but to show them there's a God. And what is in these boxes will be an answer of prayer for so many. And in packing these boxes, it shows us just how blessed we are. That children across this world will rejoice over a small container filled with simple things. As simple as a bar of soap, a toothbrush, combs and brushes, clothes, and toys that they get to play with. All because somebody cared. Somebody wanted to be a blessing. And today, God, I stretch forth my hand over all of these boxes as I ask the congregation to do likewise, and we pray a prayer of blessing over them. First off, Father, we pray not for ourselves. We're going to pray for those that they're going to touch. The hands that these boxes lay in, we pray, God, that they would come to serve you, would come to know that there is a God that is better than Buddha, a God that is better than Sun Young Moon, a God that is better than an Allah or any other name, that there is a God that is above all gods, and, and he cares for them. So much so that he allowed us that are, are more blessed than them to say we want to touch you and be a blessing. And so, Father, I pray that as these gifts are laid in the hands of these children that are less fortunate and maybe this will be the only gift they get in their entire life, may they feel the love that we fill these boxes with. May they feel the compassion and feel the sense of warmth and the sense of love that was used to pack these boxes. And Father, for these that have paid the price, whether it's for the shipping of these boxes or whether it's for the filling of these boxes, not just us, but last year over 9 million boxes were sent across this world to show that there is a God. Lord, may it increase. And may our prayers 
over the people that have supplied it. Lord, would you bless them, not just with the finances, Lord, but bless them spiritually, physically, emotionally, mentally, financially. Grow their influence. Lord, that's my prayer for all in this house today, that we would be greater in our influence, that we can touch lives and make a difference while there's still breath in us. So this day, God, we're thankful for your name. The name that's above all names. The name that demons will bow down to. That tongues will confess. While we live in a world that is trying to deny you, let us walk in authority and show the world that we're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let us proclaim the glory of God in the authority in which you have given us. Bring us back tonight, Lord. At 4.30 as we have our planning meeting and 6 as we have our service where we will talk about a great and mighty work that you want to do in our lives. We thank you for everyone that's here. Continue to give traveling protection to our ladies. Bring us back tonight safe and sound in your name. Amen and amen. Would you love on somebody, tell them you're glad to see them in the house of God.